Hi guys, your Nas is your Jade channel again. For today's video, we're going to learn about estimation of bubble point and dew point temperatures for multi-component mixture problems. Okay, so we have here one problem on the estimation of the dew point and bubble point temperature for multi-component mixtures. So the problem states that we need to estimate for the bubble point and dew point temperatures for a mixture containing 25 mole percent and pentane, 45 mole percent and hexane, and 30 mole percent and hexane mixture at 1.013 bar. So the value of R is 8.314 and the temperature is in Kelvin. So the assumption here is that we have an ideal mixture both in its vapor and liquid form. So when we talk about multi-component mixtures, it's a bit different for binary mixtures because when you estimate the bubble point and dew point temperatures for binary mixtures, it's easier because you have your VLE diagrams with you that you can just use to read the values for the bubble point and dew point temperatures. However, for multi-component mixtures, you need to do estimations or you need to do trial and errors for some of the calculations in this part. So let's start. Let's focus first on the estimation of bubble point. So, okay, estimation of bubble point. For the estimation of bubble point, we have to take note that when you talk about bubble point temperature, it's the point or it's the temperature at which the first bubble of vapor is formed. So this means that initially the system is in pure liquid form and at some temperature in the system or at a certain temperature that is adjusted in the system, the vapor and liquid phases are formed. So the vapor phases compositions are unknown but the liquid phase composition is the same as the one that is in the feed. So if I were to create the scenario, okay, so we have here a mixture, okay, containing pure liquid. Okay, so the, co the concentration is, um, okay, the concentration is, 25 mole percent, 45 mole percent, and 30 mole percent. So we have here 0 0.25 for the value of X1. X2 is 0 0.45. Ah, okay, I think it would, it would not be okay to use X because this is the feed or the initial component. I will just use Z to indicate that... Um, the mole fraction given is in a, a pure phase form not in a um, not in the vle form yet so i would like to strictly use x for the equilibrium liquid phase and i would like to use the y for the equilibrium vapor phase so 0 0.25 0 0.45 and 0 0.30 so at a certain adjustment of temperature so let's say adjust T. So when we adjust T, what happens is that two phases are formed. Okay, the lower part is the liquid phase. And then the upper part is the vapor phase. So this is the point where the first bubble of vapor is formed. So let's write here first bubble because it's the bubble point right first bubble of course at this vapor phase we don't know the value of the y1 we don't know the value of, oh, sorry we don't know the value of the y2 and we don't know the value of the y3 okay, 
So those are unknowns. However, for the liquid phase, since this is just the point we're in the first bubble of liquid forms, on a uh, the majority of the components are still in the liquid phase. So more or less, the composition in the liquid phase is still the same from the composition of the mixture prior to the adjustment of the temperature. So the value of your x1 is 0 0.25, the value of your x2 is 0 0.45, and the value of your x3 is 0 0.30. So at this temperature, there is a particular temperature called the bubble point temperature where the formation of the vapor phase and the liquid phase equilibrium occurs. So that will be our goal. Okay, so how do we go about this? The first thing that we do is, of course, to make sure that um, we use the equilibrium equations such as Reynolds law to describe the relationship between the vapor phase composition and the liquid phase composition of the components so for us to solve this one um, let's establish first the Reynolds law equations for each of the components Reynolds law okay so for component one the Reynolds law is x1 p1 vac is equal to y1 p so the pressure is unknown the p1 vac can be solved but we need to specify the temperature number two we have x2 p2 vac and then we have y2 p okay and for component number 3, x3, p3, vap, and then we have y3, p. Okay. So our known values are um, pressure, the total pressure of the system. We know the value of the x1. Okay. We don't know the value of the y1. We can know the value of the P1 VAP, but we need to specify what value of temperature should we have. And that temperature should be the T bubble. So what temperature of the bubble, uh, what bubble point temperature should give us the correct value of P1 VAP in order to make the Reynolds law equation for each of the components um, true or equal with each other. Okay, in terms of the, uh, the relationship, the mathematical relationship in the liquid and vapor phase. So, of course, we need to re-express these three equations in terms of the unknown, which is the mole fractions in the vapor phase. So, to re-express the equation, we have y1. Okay, so I'm re-expressing Reynolds law in terms of the mole fraction in the vapor phase. So y1 equals x1 p1 vap over p. I have y2 equals x2 p2 vap over p. And I have y3 equals x3 p3 vap over p. Over p. Okay, so those are the three equations. We have uh, three unknowns plus the unknown bubble point temperature. That's the important one. We don't know the bubble point temperature. We also don't know the y1, y2, and y3. So we have four unknowns. But we only have three equations for that one. Okay, so... Of course, we need to establish the fourth equation that will um, help us determine the correct value of the bubble point temperature. Remember that this process is iterative because of the nature of the vapor pressure, which is dependent on the temperature. So we need to get the right temperature first 
in order to get the right value of y1, y2, and y3. Lastly, as a form of constraint, we need to make sure that the summation of your y components or basically y1 plus y2 plus y3 should be equal to 1 because that's the basic mathematical rule for more fractions okay in each component inside the mixture so this will be our major constraint so the goal is we need to guess for a value of t bubble okay after you guess the value of the t bubble you solve for the pvap for each component because pvap is a function of temperature after you solve for pvap for each component what will you do is you need to solve for the y1 y1 is equal to a uh, yi okay in general that's xi pi vap over p okay so you need to make sure that summation of y1 is equal to 1 so if okay you are able to get it right if yes then t bubble is correct okay is correct but if no okay you need to repeat okay guess another t bubble guess another t bubble t bubble all right and then you are going to do the same process again just like that so it's an iterative process trial and error but of course to make our life easier we can use excel solver to determine the value of the t bubble so i have prepared here an excel file to make everything easier okay let's go first to the bubble point okay so i'll make everything organized first Arrow. okay so as you can see here i have already plotted everything it must be noted that our scenario for the bubble point temperature is that we initially have a pure liquid phase and then the pure liquid phase uh, the pure liquid phase mixture is adjusted in such a way that the first bubble of vapor will form forming two phases the liquid phase containing the same values of the mole fraction but we have we need to have um, a vapor phase containing a particular values or particular values of mole fractions in the vapor phase okay but we need to guess or we need to know the correct value of bubble point temperature so if you look at the excel file here i have the initial values of the x or the mole fractions in the liquid phase for the vapor pressure i already um, encoded the formulas for the vapor pressures so I suppose you know how to get the vapor pressures and compute for their values so notice that the equations we have here a cell is connected to the bubble point temperature okay so these PVAP values are a function are functions of the temperature and of course this equation over here uh this cell v cells over here are composed of equations that represent the um re-expression of Reynolds law in terms of the values of the mole fractions in the vapor phase so notice that these cells are connected to x evap yeah and so on and so forth so our last constraint is that we need to make sure that the sum of the three mole fractions that we need to guess is equal to one okay this one so notice that is the sum okay, so we need to make sure that adding all of these three will give us a value of one for now the value the total sum is 0 
which means that your guessed value of 200 Kelvin for the bubble point temperature is not yet correct. To make our lives easier, we just use a solver function. So you go to the data part. Yeah, you must uh, need to uh, integrate the solver function. Okay, I suppose you know now uh, or you already have the solver function in your Excel. And then you click the solver function. Okay. So the objective for the solver function is that the objective, okay, this one here, the cell wherein you sum up all the mole fractions should be equal to a value of 1. So this can only happen when you change the variable cell of 200. So we need to determine the correct value here by doing a trial and error process to make sure that the objective function or the, the objective cell should be equal to a value of 1. Okay, so we need to click for solve. Okay, so after doing the iteration using Excel, so we can now obtain the values of our liquid, uh, sorry, vapor mole fractions. Alright, so the conclusion here is that at the temperature, at, um, at the bubble point temperature of 334.94 Kelvin, the vapor mole fractions are 0 0.5548, 0 0.363, and 0 0.088 respectively. So let's write the answers here. 334.94. So let's write the values here. Okay. Three, three, four. Three, three, four point ninety four. And then zero point five four eight. Zero point five four eight. So I did not bother to actually write the um, Antoine equation details as well as the names of the components because yeah, I want my I want the whole process to be you know less hassle on my part. Zero point three six three and then okay zero point zero eight eight. Okay. All right. So yeah, that is my answer. So that's the bubble point temperature. Okay. Let's now go to the dew point temperature. The dew point temperature is also, or I mean, it has the same principle as the bubble point temperature calculations. But you need to make sure that for the dew point temperature, the scenario is different. For the dew point, that is the value of the temperature wherein the first dew or the first um, liquid, the first drop of liquid is formed. So basically, the scenario here is that you have a mixture that contains a that contains the following substances with their composition and the phase is in vapor phase okay, pure vapor phase so once you have a pure vapor phase mixture of course since this is a pure vapor phase you can just use the variable z okay to indicate that the feed is in pure vapor Okay, so for that one, we still use the values that is de that was declared in the problem. So we have 0 0.25, 0 0.45, and 0 0.30. So 0 0.25, 0 0.45, and 0 0.30. So in that case, you adjust the temperature in such a way that the first T adjustments probably you heat it or you cool it down in such a way that the first drop of liquid is formed so of course there is a vapor phase the vapor phase still contains the same concentrations because if you think about it you, you only form a very small drop of liquid so yeah, more or less the concentration is the same vapor phase liquid phase 
So the vapor phase, you have here Y1, Y2, and Y3. So it's the opposite for the bubble point because in the bubble point, the values of your Z1, Z2, Z3 are placed in the X. But for this case, since this tube point, the values of your Z1, Z2, and Z3 are placed in the Ys. Okay. Alright. And then what you are going to determine are the values of the mole fractions in the liquid phase. Okay, so let's leave this blank. Okay. And of course, we need to know the value of the dew point temperature. The dew point temperature is again very important because for the real slow equation, the vapor pressures are functions of temperature. So let's establish the let's establish the equations for real slow. So we have um, x one p one vap equals y one p. So if we are going to re-express that in terms of x1, so we have x1 equals y1p over p1 wrap. So the same goes for the other components. So um, would it be okay if I just do a shortcut of everything? So we have x2, y2, p over p1 wrap. So for this problem, the pressures are given, so we don't need to really worry about the P here. Okay, so apologies for doing shortcuts for this one. Oops, I think I had a mistake here. Okay, P2 VAP. This is P3 VAP. Okay. Of course, the last one is the constraint. We need to make sure that the value of your summation of x1, x2, and x3 should be equal to 1. Okay, 1.0. Alright, so let's do that, or let's do the whole process again. But this time, uh, we're going to uh, have it differently. Our unknowns will be x, and the name of the temperature will be dew point temperature. So let's go down, as you can see. I think I had the uh, compositions wrong. 2, 5, 4, 5, 13. Does it have the same composition? Okay. So I typed it wrongly in this part. Okay. Alright. So again, what I'm going to do since, you know, it will not be practical to... Oops. Okay, I will be just be copying everything. And then just change the value of the cell. Okay, that will be C22. Oops. And then for um oops, oops, oh my gosh. I had it. It's not C22, it's C18. Okay. So I need to write something. I like just uh, write 115. Okay, just to you know make the PVAP value not equal to zero remember that the pvap uh, equations for the three components are different so you cannot drag down okay it's a big no-no to drag down because um, they are functions of temperature not functions of composition the pvap equations okay so you just have to you know put a little more effort in copy pasting actually some um, youtubers educational youtubers they really organize the excel files but on my end I, um, I want to be more you know i want to be less prepared and more candid in terms of how i solve things so yeah so those are the pvap values and we need to write equations for the solving of x so the equation here according to our um, notes earlier okay, for a while so according to our notes here we have oops y1 p over p vap okay so y1 is one multiplied by our pressure i don't know the value of at 1.013 and then 
TVAP. So we have D22. So for C19, it's a constant value. So we can just... Uh, oops. I forgot. Okay. Am I, am I doing the right thing? Okay, this one. Okay, yeah. So, again, the pressure is 1.013 bar. 1.013. Okay. So, at this point, we can actually do the dragging. Okay, because we have um, maintained the cell for pressure constant by putting dollar signs. And then, uh, our PVAP is... Yeah, exclusive for each mole fraction or for I mean for each component and then the goal is to have a sum of 1 just track it okay the sum is not yet equal to 1 so we need to increase 200 uh, 300 okay so I don't like how this looks we need to make this just normal okay normal okay Every, every numbers are not all numbers are normal okay okay so for this one what we need to do is to do the same thing as what we did in the solver function for the previous for the bubble point temperature problem so we are going to click solver okay this time make sure that your objective function is this one the sum of the x components and then your value should be equal to 1 by changing the variable cell. Okay, not the top one, not the yellow one, but this one, the orange one. Okay, that's our goal. So let's solve. Okay. So according to the solver tool, the dew point temperature is 350.59 Kelvin with the corresponding mole fractions of x1 0.074 x2 0.346 and x3 0.579 so we have here oops 315.59 your x1 is 0.074 your x2 is 0 0.346 and then 0 0.579 all right that's all for my lecture on estimations for dew point and bubble point temperature for multi-component mixtures so in my next video, I'm planning to create dew point and bubble point pressures from multi-component mixtures. I will be using the same um, information, but as always, there is a different treatment to the problem if the required is different. So stay tuned for my next video on the estimation of dew point and bubble point pressures. Thank you so much and see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you subscribe to my channel for more chemical engineering tutorial videos.